What's going on everybody? It's Carmine from Bar Mind Tech and today we're going to be going over a complete beginner's guide to Docker. I'm going to throw in some stuff about Portainer and uh, I'm going to briefly go over you know, some good stuff to know in the beginning what Docker is, how we use it. And I'm going to show you how to set up Docker and Portainer on a Ubuntu desktop machine. So usually I do work with Ubuntu server. So it is the command line and I know if you're a beginner you might be a little frightened by the command line. You might not know how to use it yet. And if you use a desktop environment, it'd probably be a lot easier. So I'm going to show you how to set up uh, Docker on the desktop environment of Ubuntu. And we're going to show how to set up Portainer. Just the same way I always do in all my videos. We're going to use Nova Spirits Guide. And then we're going to set everything up. And I'll show you how to pull your first container. So let's get right into it. So starting off, I'll just go over. I did set up my Ubuntu desktop machine in Proxmox. You can do it on like a standalone box or however, if you're virtualizing, whatever hypervisor you're using. I did give it four cores of CPU, and I gave it four gigs of RAM, and I gave it 100 gigs of boot disk or total hard drive space. So that is to include for the OS install, as well as anything in the future that I might add on with my containers or any other projects that I might work off of. So this is the specs that I did for my host. Now let's go RDP into the host and start working on it. But before I get into actually working on the host, I want to just go over what Docker is briefly. So if you're new to it, maybe you're not familiar, Docker is a system that helps you containerize programs or code you're working on and kind of sandboxes them to make it easier to test and develop and see what you need to do. We do use Docker heavily in the home lab environment because it's so easy to take a project, deploy it, see if it works right, if it breaks, we can just wipe it out, start over, redeploy it and have it work for us in our home lab. So I do use Docker in my home lab a lot. I have it for VPN use, I have it for Plex Media Server or Jellyfin Media Server stuff, um, I have it for different projects around my house, I have it for DNS servers, I have a whole bunch of uses for it and it's great because I usually just click to deploy it, I can wipe it out and start over if I need or if new versions of it come out we just reinstall it and it's right there. It's, it's very lightweight, it's a very easy deployment, I don't need to run eight different hosts for a couple different things you know like in the past i would have to run a raspberry pi for a pie hole or have to run another raspberry pi for my vpn i don't need to do this anymore with with docker and portainer i can just dual do it in one place i give one machine the hardware and it branches off and it does everything for me so i do really enjoy using docker i do have the documentation here um, i'll definitely put a link down to this below if you want to read through it but if you're new and you're not familiar with docker you can give this through a read. I have a bunch of videos going over different uses of Docker and stuff I have done with it. So if you want to see it right in action, I'll put some cards and some links to some of the videos and you can go check those out so you can really see how Docker works. But this is the overview of Docker, so let's get the environment set up. All right, so now we're in our host and we're ready to start installing Docker and Portainer. So if you're new, maybe due to Ubuntu Desktop 2, to open up a terminal, we're just gonna come over to activities. Uh, we can click the show applications. Now, yours might be a little different. I might show on the left or on the bottom. I'm not sure, but this is how mine works. I'm going to click show applications and then we click to open up a terminal. And I want a different colored terminal, so I'm just going to change this real quick. Okay, so now that I have my terminal color changed, it's a lot easier to work with. First thing you want to do is a sudo app upgrade. Uh, I did do this earlier, so it's not going to have too much to do. We're going to do an update first. And then we'll do an upgrade. So we're just gonna run through, grab a couple packages, and then we'll do a sudo upgrade. Why? Now this is gonna finish upgrading and everything, so we'll just clear that out. And now we are ready to start running some commands. So I am going to bring over this, which is Nova Spirit's uh, self-hosted guide, and it has the commands we need to install Docker and Portainer. So the first one I'm gonna do is to grab the Docker con uh, config. Sorry. Okay, and now before we can run the Docker command to install it, we are going to need to add a user group for Docker. So I did go into a root account. So we're going to do sudo su, and then we're going to do group add, and then we're going to do tac g, and then you would do the group ID. So you might need to figure out what number you did. I think I did 10,000, and then you would do Docker. So you would run that command, it would make the Docker group. If it pops up saying that the group ID is already being used, you just have to change it to a number until you figure out one that's not being used. So I'm just going to clear that out, clear this again, and then let me grab my Docker setup again so we can pull the commands out of there. 
fire this up again. I'm going to copy it. And one last thing you might need to do is install curl. So we just do sudo install curl. And it'll install that. And now you're good to go. So we do sudo. And we will paste in the command. And it's going to grab the Docker scripts. And it's going to install. So when it's all done, guide one more time. We need to grab another script. And we're going to scroll down. And we're gonna reboot and then we're gonna grab the portainer script. So I'm gonna grab the portainer script now and we'll reboot the machine. So that means Docker will be able to get on and then we'll be able to start working with portainer and Docker. So let's just let this reboot and we'll be right back. So we're all back, the machine's back up and Docker is going. So now we're just going to take that portainer script we copied and we're gonna paste that in and we're gonna install that. And it's going to install Portainer, and then after that's all done, we'll be able to start going into Portainer and finishing that setup. So now that that's set up, so we're going to type in IPA to grab our IP address, and this is going to show all the interfaces that are up, and we're going to look for our IP address. So let's see, mine is 192.168.50.210. Yours is probably going to be different, so make sure you look for it and find the one that matches. If you find a 172 address, it's probably not the right one because that's usually a loopback or a private address. And the 127 is also the local host, so it's all different. So we're going to go into activities, open up Firefox, and we should be able to open up a local host and go into it that way. So let's see if that'll work. So we'll do local host colon 9000, because Portainer's 9000. It did work, so we got lucky. If it doesn't work, you'll have to use your IP address, but usually it should work that way. So we'll do duck. We'll put in uh, our username, we'll set up our password. Password needs to be kind of long, so. And then we'll just create that, and then we'll get going with that. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to get started and we're going to set up our environment. So this now is our Docker environment, but we still do have one more step we need to do. So we come back to the write up. I mean, I'm going to put the link to this in the description. We need to grab the app template. And if you're running this off a physical machine, it's probably going to be AMD 64. If you're running it off an ARM board, you're going to have to put in the ARM profile, but I'm going to grab the AMD 64 profile. We're going to copy that. And then we will go back into here. I'm going to go to settings and here it has app templates. I'm going to change this out with Nova Spirits Guide because it has it all mapped properly for us to use. We're going to save settings. So now if I go back and I click local. So if we come over to app templates, we're going to come over here and we can deploy our first container. So when you deploy your first container, it's going to write out all the directory. So it might take a minute. So let's do archive box just because it's there and it's pretty simple to deploy. I'll we'll just click deploy and it might take a minute or two and it will install the container onto our environment and it'll be all ready to run so i'll give this a second to install and we'll be back so now that our containers all deployed there are a couple things that we can know about the dashboard over here now so we do have our different containers so portainer is a container on docker so that's why you will see it listed over here but archive box is that one we just added so we have some indicators over here so we have status is running so if I was to come over here and select it, I could stop it, and then it would tell me it exited. And then I can come back over here and I could restart it or I can start the container. And over here now it'll tell me it's running. If I keep moving over, I have logs. So if I come into here, I actually can see the logs of the container running. So if you do run into an issue where a container is not working or there's something going on, you can usually come into the logs and check it out. I'll go back over here. We have a couple other options. We have inspects, we have uh, stats, and then there's a command line. These you're probably not going to use other than the command line. Every now and then you might need to go into here and connect and then you can execute some commands and check some stuff out. Um, then we have the image name and then if we keep coming over here, this is the Docker IP address. So if you were to go into Docker, that's how you could SSH, uh, SSH through there because there is a method to SSH through Docker. And then here's the published ports. So this is how we actually access Docker, the container on the web. So I'm going to show you that in one second, but let's click on to archive box and then we can see over here we have some other stuff we could do in here. So we have duplicate and edit. So on some containers you may actually need to change some stuff. So like volumes sometimes need to be remapped. So if it's a container that saves stuff onto different locations, it might ask you for different volumes. So you would have to remap the volumes to different places. 
Um, network usually won't have to change, and then environment labels typically will be the same. These are just different variables built into the container for how it operates. Uh, there's a restart policy, so you can tell it to always restart, which is a nice thing, unless it's a container you don't want to always restart. But other than that, that's really it. If you do make any changes, you do need to make sure you click deploy the container. I didn't, so I'm just going to click back. And now we can actually open, open up archive box. So I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to click the ports. I'm going to open it up and archive box is open. Now there was one thing I did forget. You might see up here on the URL, it does have 000. That's because I didn't set the IP address for the Docker host. If you're not using a local host, like I'm hosting this off of this machine, that's why it's able to hit it. But if I wasn't, we're going to run into an issue. So we're going to come over to environments and we're going to click our environment. And then here we would give it the IP address. I don't remember the IP address off the top of my head, but that's where you would type it in and then it would reset. So let me grab the IP and we'll fix this. So my IP was 210, so we'll do 168.50.210. And we'll update the environment. And now look, so I'll close that out. We'll go back to containers. And then if I click on archive box again, now it gives us the IP address in the bar. So now if I do open this up on a different computer, let's say I open it up on my Windows host, I would just go over to this URL. So I'd use the IP address with the ports and I would be able to open it up over there. So I'll show you that real quick. So I'll copy this out and then I'll go into back onto my main PC. And you can see now I can access the archive box. But if I did it with localhost, it's not going to work. I think it was 8002. Let's double check. Yeah. It's not going to work because it doesn't know what localhost is. So that's why you need to make sure you have the IP address because you're trying to network over to a different machine. But that's how you would be able to deploy your containers and access them. So that's how we set up Docker on a Ubuntu desktop machine. Like I said, I usually do it on the server machines because I like it using less resources. But if you're a beginner, maybe you're new with the home lab and, and you're not familiar with the command line yet, using an Ubuntu desktop environment is just as good. Um, it just you might use a little more resources, but it's going to be more user friendly and help you learn stuff as you go. It's going to be easier to move files and map volumes and maybe add network drives and anything else you might need. So there is no issue using it. If it's what you want to use, use it. This is how you would set up your Docker environment on it. I showed you how to set up a container. It's a super simple process. And if you do run into any issues, join my Discord. There'll be a link in the description and somebody will be in there and they'll be able to help you sort it out. Usually I get my Discord notifications throughout the day. So if I do see something pop up, I'll try to help as quickly as I can. Um, just make sure you at me in the Discord and it's the easiest way to do it. Um, I do have a Twitter. I'll drop a link to that below. I try to tweet keep it active uh, but sometimes everything else just gets in the way so if you reach out to me on Twitter and I'll get back to you right away don't feel discouraged I will get back and or I'll reach back out whatever it is and uh, I hope everybody enjoy the video and I will see you in the next one thanks for watching